I've been awaiting the arrival of the 400 Mini for quite some time, as it was going to be my first experience with any of the Atari 8-bit computer games of the past, but I also knew that the thing was going to have to be pretty good for it to get a recommendation from me. Atari has been vacuuming money from my wallet, about 120 bucks at a time for the last few months. I impulse bought the Meyer Arcade Atari Game Station Pro at full price last fall, then I caved and got a 2600 plus, again at full retail price last December. Not to mention the cartridge releases like Mr. Run and Jump, Berserk Enhanced, and Say Mary, which I still have yet to receive. Not every one of these purchases were winners, but Atari was doing more right than wrong with me in 2023 and for the start of 2024. So let's see if the 400 Mini is another solid release for fans both new and old, or if it's something that should be relegated to clearance bins across the world. As I always do with these first impressions, let's talk about the experience of opening this baby up. The box is tiny, by far one of the smallest yet for me, but I haven't bought into the whole mini console craze that much honestly. I do really like the design of the packaging, as it rightfully puts the console front and center. The top of the box shows the family of computers and consoles that this thing emulates, ranging from the 400 it's designed after, to the XEGS and 5200 console, all the way to the 800 and Atari 130XE. It could be a nice selection, but I know nothing about most of these computers. Did I mention that yet? Anyway, the packaging is fine, and the inside is packed nice and tight. And I know I shouldn't be anymore, but man, I'm always surprised by the size of these mini consoles. This thing is tiny. Maybe the size of a Jaguar controller? Wait, not many of you have held one of those. Um, maybe the size of a... Well, it's like, um... You know what, it's like 6x6 six six inches, there. It comes with yet another recreation of the CX-26, and I was thinking, great, another controller just like the one I got from the 2600+. Plus. Then I remembered that I'm an idiot, and this thing uses USB, which is actually exciting. We have a pretty faithful recreation of the 2600 controller that's USB compatible. Awesome, but more on the controller in a bit. The main course is the console, and I know people will ask, so no, the keyboard doesn't work, and the cartridge slot doesn't open. I tried. The keyboard would be too small to type on anyway. There are four front USB slots, and one more in the back for a total of five which is fantastic. I plan on plugging in a USB stick, a controller or two, and a keyboard. So it was smart for them to accommodate everything right out of the box. You also have the expected USB-C for power, the HDMI slot, and a power button on the back. And well, that's really it. The 400 Mini itself is heavier than you might think, and definitely doesn't feel cheap. Mind you, it's not heavy, but it's not as light as I anticipated. Overall, it feels like a well-made piece of equipment, I also like that USB-C power cable and HDMI cord are colored similarly to the console. It's a nice touch and probably will be nostalgic to some. No USB power brick though, but that's pretty standard anymore. You also get some instructions, but they don't tell you much, and in multiple languages too. There is an online instruction manual from RetroGames.biz that you might be interested in. I sure ended up needing it, but more on that later. Overall, I'm happy with the experience of opening this baby up, but let's plug it in and get the full. 400 mini experience. Everything slotted in as expected, and with the press of the power button, this thing came to life. I selected my language and, uh, um, why won't this thing leave the menu? This controller only has one button, what the hell am I missing? Wait, what? There's another button on the top. Okay, I totally missed this when I opened it, but this thing has a button on the top of the controller. That's pretty cool, really. I'm sure it'll come in handy. So let's press it and continue. And it's, it's not working either. Is it broke? Oh wait, there's a, well, there's sort of a bumper button. Weird, okay, so we press it to select our language and, okay, seriously, <sighs> let's look at the instructions and these things are worthless. Wait, it says top. No, it doesn't mean, oh my God, that's brilliant. It's so brilliant that somebody as stupid as me couldn't figure it out for like two minutes straight and I'm not exaggerating. The ring around the joystick is actually a sort of big button with four functions. Oh my god, this controller is not just another CX-26 remake. And really, it's awesome and just really well designed. Now here's the thing. In my initial impressions of the GameStation Pro, I praised those controllers because they were new, and I was impressed by something I hadn't held before. 
But, after having that for a while, I hate those controllers. I mean, really, maybe hate's a little strong, but... They're not as good as I initially praised them, and made them out to be. So take what I'm saying here with a grain of salt, as this is my initial impressions. But I really like this controller. I mean, like, I really like it. I think there's a lot of smart elements here, even if they aren't initially obvious. Anyway, as expected, we're plopped into a menu full of the included games, and you can find the expected stuff here. I'll run down the games really fast. You get Airball, Asteroids, Basketball, Battlezone, Berserk, Boulder Dash, Bristles, Capture the Flag, Centipede, Crystal Castles, Electra Slide, Encounter, Flip and Flop, Henry's House, Hover Bover, Lee, otherwise known as Bruce Lee, Mule, Millipede, Minor 2049er, Missile Command, O'Reilly's Mine, The Seven Cities of Gold, Star Raiders 2, Wavy Navy, and Yomp. 25 in all, and it's a nice mix of mostly Atari classics and some interesting stuff I never heard of before. And from what I can tell, they all work fine and play well. The included controller works great and feels almost identical to a regular 2600 controller with the new added functionality. Now, I don't have a ton of USB controllers, I really just have one. An old Logitech PlayStation looking thing, but it works on the Atari 400 Mini with no issues. And from what I've seen from other people and what I've read, most controllers seem to work fine. You have some nice options with the console too, such as the expected aspect ratio stuff, borders, scan lines, save states, and more. You can also customize controls for each game, which is really an amazing feature in itself. Overall, I'm impressed to this point. The expected options work fine, the controller is cool, even if it's going to take a while to learn all the shortcuts and stuff. And I heard that loading your own ROMs on this thing is a cinch. So, the Atari 400 Mini has to be a home run. Now, when it comes to games, just go to Google and type something like... Oh, I don't know, let's say Atari 8-bit computer ROM set or something. Just because we're curious. And the first link is a thread from Atari Age. And from there you can find out about all kinds of games. So anyway, I load my legally obtained backups of the games I own onto a USB stick, and we're good to go. I plug it in, and let's see, we just have to find it, and... Okay, hold on. Um, okay, I did something wrong. It's always important to format your USB thumbstick, so do that, and... Reinsert it? Alright, what the hell. I spent over an hour trying to figure out why Gen X Grown Up and several other people had it just work right out of the box, and I'm not. And I'll get right to the point. You might have to do what I did to get the ROMs to show up on the menu of the Atari 400 Mini. So if you're trying to load your own ROMs and it's not working, then I have you covered. Here's how I got it to work. Plug your USB stick into your Windows 11 computer, and then right-click and choose Open in Terminal. When the command prompt pops up, just type Disk Part, all one word. This will open another command prompt, and it's actually already opening up into a partition tool. Now I tried using the GUI partition tool, and trust me, that didn't work. So you need to do it the way I'm showing. Or at least try it the way I'm showing, because this is the only way I got mine to work. Anyway, type list disk to bring up a list of all the drives hooked to the computer. Now be careful, because this will bring up your main hard drive or SSD, along with any other drives you have plugged in. Make sure you know the size of what you're looking for. In my case, it's drive 2, the real small ancient thumb drive I've had forever now. Type select disk and then the drive number, in my case 2, and press enter. This will make sure that disk 2 is your selected disk to do the formatting to. Now you'll type clean to erase all the data from the disk. This step is required, so make sure you have backed up anything you want off the thumb drive. Then you finally type convert MBR. So give me a few seconds to explain what we're doing. The 400 Mini wants a master boot record when it looks into the USB sticks. New versions of Windows formatter or if you've already formatted a drive to XFAT or NTSF, they won't have this for some reason. But it's required. So what we've done is converted it from the newfangled stuff of Windows 11 to the old MBR format. Okay, so now you can close the prompts, but we have to finish formatting this baby. So you'll go to the search bar on your tray and type Disk Management and hit Enter. It will act like nothing is popping up, or at least it did for me, but type it all the way out and hit Enter. This will open your Disk Management tool. Once again, find the drive you've been working with, and right-click it, and select Format. Make sure FAT32 is selected for the file system, and the allocation unit size is left to default. You can name it whatever you want. Let it format, and then eject it. Now take it over to the 400 Mini, insert it, and turn it on. 
If your stick has an activity light like mine, wait for it to stop blinking and then remove it. Or just wait a few seconds, it it'll be fine. Place it back into the computer, and if you did it right, the 400 Mini will have written some files to the root of your USB drive. Now you just drag and drop your ROMs. Eject it, and when you re-enter the menu on the 400 Mini, you'll see a sort of USB thumb drive directory thing in the games list. <sighs> that was a pain for me to figure out. But I hope it helps somebody somewhere. Why I had to do this, I don't know, but I wasn't real happy. Not as angry as I was when I bought my VCS and spent all night working on that but I still wasn't happy. But it worked, and soon I was trying some of the Atari 8-bit games I was always curious about. Again, most of the games I put in work great. Sometimes you have to play with the settings, like switching the console to 130XE mode, or changing the controls a bit, but overall it's been a lot of fun and pretty simple and intuitive. So the main question is, was it worth shelling out yet another $130 for another Atari product? Well, if you have interest in the Atari 400, then yes. If you want to play it on your TV from the comfort of your couch, then yes. But if you're smart with emulators or the Raspberry Pi, then honestly, this thing doesn't do anything that those can. I mean, you get the cool CX26 USB joystick, but you can buy that from Amazon by itself. So, just ask yourself, are you interested in the Atari 8-bit computers? If yes, then continue. If not, then don't buy it. Do you already emulate from a computer or have a Raspberry Pi? Or would you rather get a Raspberry Pi or emulate? If yes, then don't buy it. If no, well, then go ahead and pick it up. It feels like it's built to last, and the user interface is intuitive and inviting. It looks great on my HD TV, and I can't wait to capture some more gameplay off of it for all you guys. Just like the rest of the mini consoles and computers, like the NES and SNES Mini, the PlayStation Mini, and the C64 Mini, this thing is meant to be an easy, plug-and-play nostalgia piece. Something to get you thinking of the good old days, or to allow you to experience an era of Atari history that you missed out on. It's cool, it's fun, and it's worth it if you want it. But anyway, that's my first-hand experience and impressions with the consoles so far. But now I want to hear from you guys. Do you have a 400 Mini, or do you plan on getting one? If so, why? Or do you think it's a waste of money? And again, why? And did I forget to go over or mention anything that I should have in this video? Let me know the answers to all this and what games people should be playing on the 400 Mini down in the comments below. And please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe. I put out at least two videos a week, including at least one review. And please check out the Atari Network podcast this week. Myself and co-host Funkmaster V from Atari 7800 Forever discuss all the cool and new things about Atari. Chat interaction is appreciated, but not required. Join us this Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time 4.30 Pacific, and then every other Friday beyond that. I'd also like to take the time to thank these classy Atarians for supporting me on Patreon. With their support, the Atari Network continues to grow and go strong, with new cool stuff to cover and new equipment. My mic recently died, and without them, I wouldn't have been able to replace it. So thank you to Jolt7800, My Own Celestial, Head Trauma Bob, OG Hugo, Ball Gobbler, Socrates63, and Fend the Spook. You guys rock. Thanks again for the support. Okay guys, with all that said, it's time for me to go play with this 400 Mini some more. I'm the 7800 Pro Gamer, man with more money than sense here at the Atari Network, and I'd like to thank you all for checking out my first impressions video. And please remember to stay classy, Atarians.